Thanks for joining us today. It was a little more than a month ago that I declared a public health emergency on COVID-19. And folks, a lot has happened in the last month. We've been working around the clock to respond to and prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Wisconsin. And as I've said all along, we've been guided by science and public health experts to do what's best to keep our families, our neighbors, and our communities safe. It's a little more than three weeks ago now that I sat in this very chair and I asked for your help when I announced our Safer at Home order. I had met with business leaders and local health leaders and overwhelmingly we needed an all hands on deck approach to stopping the spread of COVID-19 in Wisconsin. Each and every one of us had to do our part to make sure that our healthcare workers and system didn't become overwhelmed by an influx of cases. I've said all hands on deck meant you too, and by golly folks, you delivered. From businesses like La Crosse's Distillery that started making hand sanitizer last month and is partnering with the Badger State Sheriff's Association to deliver hand sanitizer to every de sheriff's department in the state, to folks at the Allen Centennial Garden helping keep up the spirits of healthcare workers at UW Hospital by donating hundreds of indoor plants from the greenhouse. To folks like Ashley from Monticello who donated her salon's supply of masks and disinfecting supplies to her local post office. And Larry from Austin, who is a diesel mechanic who's, st who's still working and making sure our truck drivers can get their goods to market. And educators who are still working to keep teaching, inspiring and empowering kids across our state like Mrs. Krieger from Mountain Bay Elementary, who reads a chapter from a book to her students every night. To the folks across Wisconsin who are picking up groceries for their neighbors, disinfecting hospitals and doctor, doctor's offices so they're safe for healthcare workers and their patients, running childcare centers, stocking the grocery store shelves, and making food so our restaurants can keep their doors open and to the untold stories of folks across our state who are making sacrifices, who are trying to make ends meet, who are doing their best to get by, who've kept their families, their neighbors, and their communities healthy by staying safer at home. A few weeks ago, we had a pretty grim outlook for what COVID-19 could mean for our state. According to the model created by the Department of Health Services, Wisconsin was projected to have between 440 and 1,500 deaths from COVID-19 by April 8th. But Safer at Home is working, folks, and it's because of all of you that we are where we are today. In the first three months of Safer at Home, our data shows that we have saved at least 300 lives and perhaps as many as 1,400 lives. We have helped flatten the curve which has resulted in fewer cases and hospitalizations. And folks, we've saved lives together. But as I said all along, I'm going to rely on the science and public health experts to help us guide us through these challenges. Because at the end of the day, my bottom line is keeping people safe. And we're not out, just, uh, we're not out of the clear just yet. COVID-19 has been and still is a situation that sometimes changes by the hour. And that's why just as I did three weeks ago, today I'm asking for your help. Earlier today, we announced that K through 12 schools will remain closed for the remainder of the school year. And we are extending our safer at home order until May 26th. And I need all of you to continue doing the good work you've been doing so we can keep our families, our neighbors and our communities safe and so that we can continue flattening that curve so our healthcare workers and system can continue saving lives. Our new Safer at Home order includes the important protections that are keeping people safe, but it also includes some new flexibilities. This order will allow businesses new opportunities to serve customers, including deliveries and curbside pickup, while keeping their workers and customers safe. We're making it safer to shop at large retailers by implementing social distancing at stores like Target and Fleet Farm. Craft stores will be able to more easily get folks materials they need to make their own face masks and coverings. We're also allowing people to pick up the latest novel or children's books from their local library through curbside pickup. 
And with the weather hopefully starting to warm up, you'll now be able to get outside and play a round of golf with some common sense restrictions. You can still get to take out to take get out to take a walk, go for a bike ride or walk the dogs. It's good exercise and it's good for everybody's mental health. But please don't take any unnecessary trips and limit your travel to essential needs like going to the doctor, grabbing gro groceries or getting medication. Now, I know a lot of folks are concerned about the effects this will have on workers and businesses across our state. And believe me, no one wants to reopen our economy as much as I do. But the bottom line is that our businesses, our workers, and us as consumers can't be confident if we're not confident about our safety and our health. We can't think of this like flipping a light switch. It's like turning a dial. The more disciplined we are now, the faster we can turn it. Now, I want to be honest with you folks. Things won't get back to normal until there's a vaccine and treatment for this disease. And even then, our new normal will not be the same as our old normal. This will be a slow and gradual process. Let me be clear. This will not be like turning off a switch, but rather a dial that we can, we can turn to ramp down safer at home so that we can safely get back to our way of life. However, we know what we need to do to move forward. Our team at the State Emergency Operations Center has been hard at work developing a plan that will allow us to safely reopen our economy. I've been talking with business leaders and entrepreneurs, and so have members of my cabinet. I've also been communicating with governors around the country, particularly our neighbors in the Midwest. Here in the Midwest, we are bound by our commitment to our people and the community. We recognize that our economies are all reliant on each other, and we must work together to safely reopen them so hardworking people can get back to work and businesses can get back on their feet. Earlier today, I joined a bipartisan co coalition of governors in announcing that the states of Wisconsin, Michigan, Minnesota, Illinois, Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana will work in close coordination to reopen our economies in a way that prioritizes workers' health. Our number one priority when analyzing when best to reopen our economy is the health and safety of our residents. We will make decisions based on facts, science, and recommendations from experts in healthcare, business, labor, and education. Phasing in sectors of our economy will be most effective when we work together as a, as a region. This doesn't mean our economy will reopen all at once or that every state will take the same steps at the same time, but close coordination will ensure we get this right. Over time, people will go back to work, restaurants will, will reopen, and things will get back to normal. Moving forward, we know that businesses need some clarity so that they can begin to plan. How can they make their customers feel safe? How can they make their businesses safe for their employees? And how can they implement appropriate social distancing? Well, here's how we'll do it. First, we need a massive expansion of our testing capacity. We've been steadily increasing our testing capacity for weeks and private labs and more private labs continue to come online. That capacity will need to increase significantly. This will require us building our existing strong public-private partnerships that will serve all of Wisconsin. In order to support a dramatic increase in te testing capacity, we will also need to grow our healthcare workforce and have sufficient personal protective equipment to ensure our workers are safe. We also need PPE for many of our critical workers to safely do their jobs. Right now, despite our state's ongoing efforts to get our fair share of supplies from the federal government, our successful PPE donation and buyback programs, and our aggressive procurement efforts, we still do not have enough PPP to keep all our workers safe, which is why we're working with health systems and businesses to implement decontamination strategies of our existing PPE so that we can safely bolster the supplies we have. So as we work towards safely reopening our economy, we're gonna need a lot more PPE. 
The state continues to pursue this equipment through every avenue. Our members of Congress are great partners in pushing the federal government to do its part, and some Wisconsin businesses are already stepping up to help manufacture these supplies. In addition to expanding our testing capacity and acquiring more PPE, we will need to greatly expand our contact tracing efforts around the state. Once we've identified someone who is infected, it is imperative that we find out where they have been and who else they may have exposed. The more folks stay safer at home, the easier it is for our public health officers to trace their steps and contact others they have been in contact with. But when we're dealing with situations where someone who is sick has been in contact with dozens of other people in several different settings over a course of a week or more, it is much more of a challenge to track down everyone who might have been exposed. Contact tracing can be difficult and time-consuming work, but it is an essential program and uh, a component of our plan to safely reopen our economy when the science tells us the time is right. These major components, more tests, more PPE, contact tracing, along with daily analysis of the scientific data, will be the metrics that guide us going forward. At the end of the day, we have to remember we're all in this together, folks. And while we may, may not be all in the same boat, we're all weathering the same storm. So thank you for the work you've been doing by staying safer at home. And let's keep up the good work, Wisconsin. And with that, I'll turn it over to Secretary Andrea Palm. Thank you, Governor. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, as usual, uh, for joining us again today um, and for taking uh, these important steps uh, to continue to keep uh, Wisconsin uh, safer at home. Uh, safer at home is working. Uh, by working together as a state and following physical distancing guidelines, we have already saved lives. As the governor said, according to our modeling, in the first three weeks, Safer at Home has saved at least 300 lives and perhaps as many as 1,400 lives. We can continue to save lives by using Safer at Home. Together, we're flattening the curve. Together, we are supporting our healthcare workers by not overwhelming the hospital system. Together, we have saved lives, and together, we will save more. The data tells us that Safer at Home is working, and the science of the virus tells us what the path ahead needs to look like. By taking key steps in the next three weeks, excuse me, in the next weeks and months, we will be able to reduce the likelihood of a future surge in COVID-19 cases and deaths. Instead, by taking these steps, we will continue to save lives and to build our healthcare capacity so that starting to turn the dial on Safer at Home is a safe step to take. Over the next month, while we remain safer at home, we here at the state, uh, res statewide response will continue to build on the progress we've made with our partners in healthcare, the private sector, business, and local communities to keep Wisconsin safe. First, as the governor mentions, we need to continue to dramatically increase testing. This means we need to not only build more lab capacity and acquire more testing supplies, but it also means we need to obtain more personal protective equipment to make administering these tests safe. In a little over a month, thanks to a public-private partnership with Wisconsin biotech companies, we have already increased lab capacity from 500 to almost 7,000 tests a day. But we are still not testing enough to facilitate the kind of contact tracing we'll need to do moving forward or to know, or to know the true prevalence of COVID-19 in Wisconsin. We need a clearer picture of the situation, and the only way to take that picture is to further scale up our testing capacity. This is a critical and fundamental tool as we work to get to the next phase of our response. But testing isn't enough. Just knowing that the virus exists in a community, that's only the start. Once positive cases are identified, we must engage in contact tracing. Contact tracing involves interviewing every person who tests positive for COVID-19 to determine who else may have been exposed to the virus and then following up with those people so that they can take steps to quarantine or self-isolate. We have begun this work, but we will need a more robust system to put Wisconsin in a position to be able to actively and aggressively manage this virus until we have a vaccine or effective medical intervention. 
By identifying potential cases and then containing the spread, we will reduce the number of people infected and continue to protect our frontline healthcare workers, the healthcare system, and to save lives. But we also need to make sure we have safe spaces for isolation and quarantine to make that possible. The good news is that what we're doing, breaking the cycle of virus transmission through staying safer at home is working, which means we know what we must continue to do. The bottom line is that COVID-19 is a highly contagious virus that can infect people even if the level of exposure is low and can transmit even if the infected person is not showing any symptoms. Its high infection rate means that it travels easily between people and because people travel easily between geographic areas, the virus can spread easily between communities. There is no medicine for COVID-19 and there is no vaccine. So it is up to us to continue to work together to stop transmission and slow the spread. And we do that by staying safer at home. So here's where things stand today. We've got 29 active labs running COVID-19 tests in Wisconsin with a daily lab capacity of 7,578 tests. We have 40,974 negative tests, uh, which is an increase of 1,648 over yesterday. Uh, we have no additional counties reporting cases for the first time. And there are now 3,875 confirmed cases of COVID-19, which is an increase of 154 cases over yesterday. Our number of COVID-19 hospitalizations is 1,121, which is an increase of 30 patients. And that means that 28% of people who have tested positive for COVID-19 in Wisconsin have been hospitalized. Our total death uh, has now reached 197 Wisconsinites. Before we start to turn the dial on safer at home, further expanding testing and more robust public health containment measures must be in place. These steps will help us reduce the risk of a second wave of the virus. If we open up too soon, we risk overwhelming our hospitals and requiring more drastic physical distancing measures again. Extending Safer at Home will give Wisconsin the time to finish building up the tools we need to actively manage the virus and begin our return to a new normal. We can't change the fact that this virus is highly contagious, but we can stay home so it doesn't have the chance to infect us. We can't change the fact that there are no effective medicines and no vaccine, but we can stay home long enough for our hospitals to build enough capacity to treat people who need it. We need everyone's help to do this. At DHS and through our statewide response, we are doing the work to prepare our state and to take the steps we need to ease safer at home. But we cannot do this work without partners in the community. We're partnering with the labs and the healthcare system, with local governments and businesses large and small. And we cannot do this work without you. We know this is hard. And what we are asking you to do disrupts your everyday life, your ability to see family and friends, your ability to work and to make ends meet. But this is what we need to do to save lives. We are so thankful for the incredible and life-saving work our frontline healthcare workers are already doing. They are going to work for us. We need to stay home for them. We need you to stay safer at home a little longer, to take only essential trips a little longer, and to continue to follow quarantine and self-isolation guidance. Together we can protect each other, and together we can get through this. Thank you, Wisconsin, for all the work you have done and all the work you continue to do. And with that, I will turn it over to Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation CEO, Missy Hughes. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Governor Evers and Secretary Palm, for your leadership and difficult discuss decisions and for allowing me to join here today. So obviously, the extension of the Safer at Home order is a continued challenge to the Wisconsin economy. There have been a lot of questions and discussions about when and how we might reopen the economy and the governor and the secretary and many of us have been involved in those discussions and, and heard many of the questions. But I want to emphasize for you that a path has been laid out today that will lead us to reopening the economy and that path has to include testing and PPE, contact trace, tracing and isolation. And we will continue to have to do these things and build these tools in the coming weeks, and this will have to stay in place until we have a vaccine. So I want to level set for a moment and talk about the impact of COVID-19 on Wisconsin's economy. And that impact has been tremendous. 
For me, the first moment that I saw a signal that this was going to impact Wisconsin's economy was back in January when I was meeting with a very large manufacturer who has thousands of employees in China. And at that time, they informed me that all of their employees in China were being told to stay at home and the factories were being closed. So really, that is the first moment that we understood that this was going to start to impact our economy. Weeks later, I was traveling in Mexico and had a chance to visit with the mission of uh, foreign affairs and talked with the minister there, and we talked about the opportunity that this presents to make sure that we have a diverse supply chain and how this is going to impact manufacturers both in Mexico and Wisconsin where we have very strong trade relations. And finally, at the end of February, I was speaking with the Kenosha Area Business Alliance, and they raised the question, what does this mean? What's going to happen with COVID-19? So we've been watching this come at, uh, for some time now, but I would say that none of us foresaw the impact that this was going to have on the small restaurant in Ashland or the independent painter in Green Bay or the cancellation of our festivals and conferences for um, many, many different organizations. So this ep economic impact has swept across the state, and it's affected large and small businesses, performance venues, nonprofits and chambers. Everybody has borne the brunt of this virus. We've seen a 40% drop in restaurant sales and practically a 100% decrease in travel-related sales. So to give you a sense of what small business means in Wisconsin, I just want to share this with you. We have 50,000 small retailers, 44,000 small health care and social serv service providers, 23,000 arts and entertainment and recreation businesses, and over 17,000 small food and lodging businesses. All of these impact, uh, businesses have been impacted by the coronavirus. So at WEDC, in the last few weeks, we've really been focused on responding to this crisis as it hits Wisconsin. The first thing we did was stand up a small program, $5 million, that was accessible for businesses of 20 employees or less. It was a small effort to try to bridge the gap between the federal stimulus um, coming into, this, into the state and um, that moment. Uh, we also did work with the state to make sure we had the necessary designations in place for the Small Business Administration so that our businesses in Wisconsin could access the loans coming out of the Small Business Administration. And to date, the Small Business Administration has approved loans to nearly 32,000 Wisconsin businesses, totaling over more than $7.2 billion. And payments of these loans should begin to arrive within 10 days of approval. Now, we've heard today the news that the applications for that have been uh, postponed, but we'll be continuing to work with businesses throughout Wisconsin to be ready when those applications hopefully are able to be taken again. And I want to say that in Wisconsin um, and other rural states like us, there's been um, excellent ability to access the SBA loans. And that really comes from a strong relationship throughout our communities with our community banks and our credit unions and their abilities to step in and help the businesses. So we're very thankful for that. In addition, at WEDC, we've been working to help businesses navigate the challenges of essential versus non-essential. And we've helped businesses to be able to understand where they fall in the safer at home order. And I want to say that businesses have all wanted to do the right thing. They want to make the right choices. And that shows us why Safer at Home has been working, because so many Wisconsinites and so many Wisconsin businesses have been working to do the right thing. And finally, we've connected with many businesses and the State Emergency Operations Center to help with pivoting, as the governor mentioned, to creating hand sanitizer or manufacturing PPE building emergency centers, and helping develop testing. We're so thankful for the strength of Wisconsin's manufacturers and businesses to step into this challenge with both feet and help us solve these problems. So as we move forward and we continue to hear these thoughts about when do we reopen the, the economy and what does that look like, we have work to do. At all of our workplaces, we need to be looking and understanding what is it going to be like to reintroduce employees into our workplace? What's it going to be like to have the public, customers, come into our workplace? And we need to be working, looking at our workflows and our workspaces and making sure that we've been able to adapt and include things like social distancing and protection and cleaning on a regular basis to make sure that as 
workers and customers come back into these workplaces, they feel confident and they want to participate in that business and be there. And so we need to be working on that now. Now is the time to be focused on that so that when we're ready, when we've done this work with these different paths of PPE and testing, we're ready to be able to open our doors and you know turn that dial to slowly let folks back in. But if we don't do that work now, if we don't do the work to analyze our businesses, we're really going to be behind, we'll fall back behind the curve and we'll need to um, then do the work. And, and customers won't be comfortable coming into your stores or sitting in your restaurants. Um, and employees will feel uncomfortable working there. So we really have to take the time now and we're, we're blessed to have this time, as, as crazy as that seems, to be able to do that work now and be ready for that. And the, the small businesses, the healthcare workers, the teachers, all the frontline workers, they have taken the brunt of this and they deserve our doing the work to be able to help everybody get back to normal and get back to that place where we know and love where Wisconsin can be. So I'm very aware that Wisconsin businesses are going to need resources to reopen, whether it's building plexiglass walls to create that safe distance or buying inventory, you know, the coffee shop that needs to buy milk and pastries. There's resources needed for that. And so at WEDC, we're working to understand the federal resources that are available. We're working with the state to understand what resources we might be able to deploy here. And we will continue to do that. And I look forward to working with our federal offices, the governor and the legislature on that. So finally, we need to keep working and talking together. Over the last few weeks and the last many months, I've had the privilege of talking with many, many businesses and many economic development groups and regional groups all around the state. And those groups are coming together now and thinking about reopening also. We're, we're hearing about lots of groups that are taking on this task and thinking about it for their region or their industry or their sector. And we welcome that and we welcome those perspectives because by gaining all of those dif different perspectives, we can have a chance to really understand the challenges and find solutions together. And that's what we need to be doing together. We need to be continuing to think uh, smartly and strongly and act bravely as this comes forward. So I want to echo Governor Evers and Secretary Palm for and thanking you for all that you've done for Wisconsin. Let's go forward together. <laughs>